Oh hey, it's Wes. And today, it's time to talk about one of my favorite lens manufacturers, the new lens, the Viltrux 75 1.2 for E-mount. This lens also comes out on Fuji and will be on Nikon Z-mount as well. And this is the first lens in their new Pro lineup. We're gonna talk about everything, but first of all, as always, we're gonna talk about the build quality. That's where the Pro lineup becomes the most obvious. The most recent lens we looked at from Viltrux was this, the 16 1.8, which looks pretty similar, almost bafflingly so. Now, the 16 was in their RBW series, which is a series that started a long time ago with, I believe, the 85 1.8, their first full frame lens. Really love this lens, has some weaknesses. Autofocus is a little shaky, but honestly, more reliable than the 85 G Master most of the time. And so with the 16, they kind of evolved the formula a little bit. We have weather sealing on this lens. They put a, a focus distance screen on this one, but for some reason on their pro lens, there is no focus distance screen. Now, I didn't care whether or not that lens had a screen, so that's no big deal to me. When we look at this one, we, oh, it feels hefty. It feels even heftier than the 85 1.8, even though this is just an APS-C lens. And that is honestly my biggest disappointment for this lens. This is great for Fuji X-mount users, great for APS-C Sony users, not as great for me. So even though this is a fairly substantial lens, it's only an APS-C lens. Now that shouldn't be surprising, this is a 1.2. So 1.2 lenses are usually bigger than this. So not big for a 1.2 lens. We'll start with the lens hood here. It is very thick, very durable. It is plastic. We have ridges on the inside. I like it more than the one that came with the 16 because the 16 one comes off way too easily. And this is a much bigger problem with the 16 than it would with any other lens because if this lens hood is shifted ever so slightly, you can see the lens hood in your photos. That is a constant struggle for me. Whereas the 75, it locks on a little more positively. Lens cap is typical from what we're used to on a Viltrox lens. Not a bad lens cap. We have mostly metal design, plastic buttons, not surprising. Have a metal aperture ring here. Feels nice. And of course, we have the weather sealing gasket on the back, USB-C port for firmware updates. Overall, this lens has build quality exactly where it counts, and it appears to be a 10 out of 10 for build quality. Some people might say, well, it says it's weather sealed, but can you trust one of these smaller third-party lenses to really be weather sealed? Well, I use this in a downpour for 20, 30 minutes. It was just pouring rain on this and perfectly fine. This is a weather sealed lens. Handling and usability. As I said, it's a little bit heavy, but not that heavy for a 1.2 lens. But we have to take into account this is actually an effective equivalent for a full frame lens of like a 1.15, 1.8, which is still a lot of light and a lot of distance. One great thing for usability is the USB-C port on the back that makes firmware updates super easy. Just drag and drop. None of this faffing around that you have to do with Sony. Although they don't seem to release firmware updates as often as they used to back in the day. They'd come out all the time, but these days I was really hoping for a firmware update for the 16. It hasn't come out yet because the autofocus past like F4 is not fantastic. The knurling on the focus ring is a little bit smooth and the, uh, the weight on the focus ring is a little bit light. Aperture ring feels great. However, the lock at from auto to 16 is not very strong, and so I do bump this out all the time, much the same as I do on the 16. So I would like to see an actual lock or a harder bump there. It is a declickable aperture ring, so if you're doing video, nice and smooth. Autofocus manual focus switch, love to see it. And you have a custom function button on the side, just one, unlike the 16, which has two. Overall, for handling and usability, not perfect, but very close to it. It's a nine out of 10. Now, image quality. This is where the 16 didn't quite hold up. Wide open, not the sharpest. 
flare control, color accuracy, not phenomenal. And the 85 years ago, wide open was usable, not, again, not amazing. This was overall just a slightly below first party lens. However, this 75 1.2 for image quality in almost every single way bests the Sony 85 1.4. I'm not joking around here. <laughs> for flare control, this is a little bit better. For sharpness, this is a little bit better. I have to admit the 85 1.4 is an older lens, but this still is significantly more expensive lens and this bests it. How much does it best it? If I am shooting this on my a7 IV, which has 33 megapixels, and I take the same picture, we're talking near wide open apertures. At 33 megapixels on this, and we're looking at what, like 15 megapixels on this in crop mode? If I export both files at 24 megapixels, which is what I do, this one generally looks sharper which is crazy. And here we have three 100% crops. We have the 75 at 1.2, the 75 at 1.4, and the 85 at 1.4. And as you can see at 1.2, we see just a little bit of the uh, textured sparkle on the side here, identical lighting for all of these, and lots of the textured sparkle here at 1.4. So we're reaching very high level of sharpness already. But the 85 1.4 at this aperture is not sharp enough to show much sparkle going on here. There is just just the tiniest bit. Our focal point isn't quite the same, but we should still be able to get the same amount of sparkle, and it's just not working out for us. Now let's close these and do a comparison at 2.8. And in our first one, we went with just basic APS-C crop mode, in our second one, we did the 20 to 22 megapixel crop manually. As you can see, we got some more detail out of this when we have the subject filling the same amount of screen space. We get more detail. And then with the 85, again at 2.8, just not nearly as much detail going on here. Now, once you stop it down, that difference becomes much less significant because this is fairly soft wide open. But if you're shooting wide open, you're getting about the same and possibly better perceptual resolution on this lens in crop mode as you are on this lens. Now, if we were to use, say, one of the newer G Master lenses that's even sharper, that wouldn't be the case, but as it is, fantastic. Chromatic aberration, very well controlled. Corner sharpness, pretty good, not amazing. And so I've got to say, this is a nine out of 10 for image quality. Very impressive and easily, by far and away, the best lens for image quality that Viltrox has ever made. I would, I would hazard to say that this is the best image quality lens of any new third-party manufacturer. So we're excluding Sigma. Honestly, it's better than a Tamron lens I've used, but yeah, it's shocking, amazing, fantastic. Image character though. This is what always concerns me. This is where things can fall apart for me. Some people don't think about it, but I think about it all the time. Image character is very important. And I love the character of the 85G Master. That makes it one of my favorite lenses. This one, however, has a very distinct character. The uh, cat's eye or footballing of the bokeh starts very close to center. So they're really pushing the limits of their uh, 77 millimeter front element here. Obviously it could be a little bit wider to prevent that, but I wanted to keep the size compact on this. Now, you might like that, you might not. It can create a pretty intense swirling effect because the bokeh becomes so narrow around the sides. That's something I should have mentioned earlier on. We do have a fair amount of vignetting with this lens. It's a price that they pay to make it fairly compact. Now, not as much vignetting as there could be because if you shoot this in full frame mode instead of crop mode, you can easily get about 20 megapixels, maybe 22 of usable space on this instead of the much smaller 15, again, on the a7 IV that you would crop down to. So if you're willing to do a little extra work, you can use more of the image circle on this. It's a pretty wide image circle, which I didn't expect because there is still vignetting when you're wide open in crop mode. But when you stop it down, that clears up a little bit. There's always a little vignetting on this lens though, but you can get even more picture on this if you want. This lens can come off as a little bit clinical at times. It's very sharp, very decisive lens. 
The flares, I think, are gorgeous and warm and soft, which often doesn't happen with a lens that has a very clinical presentation. However, I think it has a great look. It pops really well. The subjects stand out nicely. And with the flares and the swirl and with the very strong presentation of bokeh, I would give this an 8.5 out of 10 for image character. I really like it. It looks great. But I will admit it is a bit polarizing with all that cat sighing and swirling going on. So it may or may not be your cup of tea. Focus performance. This is another surprise. The 16 was good, but not amazing. Great for video, but once you stopped it down, it wasn't great. This one, it, it works through the apertures, narrower apertures better than the 16 did. However, around the edge of the frame, for some reason, the focus points don't work great when you stopped it down. And that's the same case with the 16, just not as bad on this. However, overall, it is more reliable in low light than the 85G Master and it is a tiny bit faster than the 85G Master. Again, that is a very low bar. The focusing is a little bit slow overall compared to modern lenses with like direct drive autofocus engines, but it is very reliable. It's great for video. That uh, slight slowness kind of smooths things out. It's definitely not a sports lens, but absolutely no issue overall with focusing. But again, you gotta watch out around the edges of the frame. It's not fantastically reliable especially when you stop it down. But if you're just focusing on the rule of thirds for the most part, you're not going to notice that. So I'm gonna give that an 8.5 out of 10 for autofocus. Great job. Value, this is where things get a little bit muddy. Because this is an APS-C lens, there's not a lot that competes directly with it. So we don't have a lot of APS-C lenses in this range. Now on a Fuji, it's a little more straightforward because all their lenses are like that. So if we look close here at all the lenses available, we have the Mikey 85 1.8 and the Viltrox 85 1.8. Honestly, these are the closest ones, but these lenses are made for full frame. We have the Rokinon 75 1.8. Still nothing even close to a 1.2 aperture. And if we keep going here, we're going to come across a bunch of lenses that are more expensive and not even close to comparable. 90mm f2, 80mm f2.8. So it's hard to say any of these directly compare. Ironically, Viltrox's own 85 1.8 is the closest thing for the Fuji X mount. If you want this look, this focal length, and you're on Fuji X mount, buy this lens. The only issue is it's very tight. Some people don't like going beyond 85 for portraiture. Some people love going beyond 85, and if you do, boom, just buy this if you don't mind the character of this lens. But let's compare it to a few things here. This comes in at 550 US dollars. That is a lot. <laughs> you can get a portrait lens on Sony E-mount for significantly less than that. Let me introduce you to the Mikey 85 1.8. This thing is $200, has a phenomenal character, terrible color reproduction, but it's mostly kind of a romantic thing. It has autofocus, but the autofocus is nearly unusable. It is less though. <laughs> Sam Yang has a 75 1.8 for $400. These are full frame lenses I'm comparing this to. Yang Nuo 85 1.8, $345. Great, great lenses. Not as wide aperture, but they're full frame. You have the Rokinon 85 1.4, $700. is a Mark II for $800. Sony has their 85 1.8 for $600. So just slightly more than this. And that Sony has kind of a clinical look too, but I find it lacks a approachability in the image character. So I don't generally like that. But again, this is a crop lens and there aren't really any dedicated crop portrait lenses for Sony that are fantastic. This is a very complicated calculus in that there's not much to compare it to, but there's also a lot to compare it to. So I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. It's a great value for what it is, but do you want what it is? If you're going for big lenses, big bokeh, you're probably shooting full frame, then that's not the lens for you. If you're going for smaller bodies, maybe that's not your thing. So there is a market segment with those smaller APS-C bodies where this thing just cannot be beat. So what does that give us for a total? That gives us a total of 86.7%. And honestly, that is fantastic. Where does that add up in our uh, overall rankings? Wow, that is up there. <laughs>
This is a phenomenal lens, and I will admit it's a bit of a tough sell on Sony, but on Fuji X-Mount, I feel like this thing is a no-brainer. There are less third-party lenses available, and the first-party lenses, this just isn't an option that matches this blow for blow. So on X-Mount, boom, buy that. If you have Sony APS-C E-mount and you want a crazy portrait lens, boom, buy that. <laughs> I'll have links down in the description below if you want to pick one of these up. If you have any questions about it, let me know, and I'll get back to you in the comments. But until next time, let's go take some photos.